Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Lanco's Clyde Martin Memorial Speedway. Thank you to those of you that are joining us on the National Racing Network live stream, getting ready for a couple of makeup features to roll out onto the racetrack. Opening ceremonies will take place after the makeup features. We're still running last Saturday night's races, if you could believe it. Seven, night, seven days later, we're going to come back out and get our first two features of the night. We're going to roll out the sportsman division onto the racetrack first for their makeup feature event from one week ago. And Bradley, for I'm sure you've been in this experience before. Well, yeah, let me first introduce you. Bradley Brown joining us here once again in the booth. Uh, you've, you've done that scenario where you're ready to go, then you rain out, you're going to come back however long later to run the feature. Is it tough to get, like, to calm down at the end of the night? You got the adrenaline flow and you're ready to go and then just pull the plug. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big bummer for a lot of us. We're here to race, and when, when you can't get that feature in, that, that's the race we're here for, and that's what all the fans are here for. So it's, it's really disappointing not to get it run. So we'll see the sportsmen. They're uh, starting to grid up here, down here in the staging area. We'll get them out onto the racetrack in just a moment. Let's get you the starting lineup. Making up row number 12, the 14 of Jason Swavely and the 83 of Evan Lawrence. Row number 11, the 32 with Jack Redkay and the 13B of Matt Yo. Row number 10, the 19M of Max Fosnot and the 9G of Jamie Flickinger. Row number 8, the 14M Chelsea Moore and the 8 of Michael Spatafora. Row number eight, the four of Mike Miller and the 21D of Dave Williams. Row seven, the N8 and eight Gibble and the 15 of Robert Shanneman. Starting in row number six, the 21V, David Ravel and the 10Z of Brian Sholley. Top 10 starters, the 88 of Jesse Maurer and the 7L of Chase Laser will start 10th and 9th respectively in row number five. Row number four, starting eighth, the 23K of Courtney Cup and the 22J of Raymond Olinger. Row three, the 22 of Clinton Hauser rolls off in position number six, starting on the inside, the 26 of Corey Schmuck Jr. Row two, the 77 of defending track champion Mike Kreiser, and the five of Brett Cronrath rolling off in the fourth and third positions. And on the front row, the number two of, excuse me, in position two, the 11M of Jessica Moore, and the 5A of Anthony Yerger will be your pole sitter for tonight's Sportsman Makeup Feature event. Six was the inversion pill that was drawn, so the top six cars are inverted from their, I guess, earned starting positions. I want to welcome everybody to Viper Chassis Night here at the racetrack. It'll be a pleasure to have Pete Skiish joining us up here in the booth at the intermission period. He'll tell us a little bit about all the good stuff going on with Viper Chassis. Also, it is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Night. You'll see a lot of teal ribbons around the racetrack. All the drivers were provided with the teal ribbons when they signed in tonight. Tonight we race in honor of Gail Miller. Gail is the wife of longtime club board member Gary Miller and a longtime racer, for that matter, Gary Miller, the owner of the 82 and the 270 division. Gail lost her battle with ovarian cancer early this year, and tonight we race in her honor and her memory. The 50-50 drawing tonight will go to the Ovarian Cancer Society, excuse me, the Ovarian Cancer Foundation. Also, the drivers will be doing a helmet walk through the grandstands at intermission. And for those of you that are watching on the live stream, we would encourage you to make a donation as well in Gail's memory to the Ovarian Cancer Foundation. Coming up at intermission, it will be a Mike Knappenberger candy and photo scramble. So for those of you in attendance with the kids, make sure you get them signed up and registered at the Kids Club table back here by the Kim's Creations photo and novelty stand. We'll also be pulling Victory Lane photo winners for tonight's main event features, but we have a couple of them already. Jackson Hoffman in the 600s and Faith Skius in the Sportsman. You'll get a victory lane photo with tonight's makeup feature winners. So Faith Skius, you'll want to head down to the 
start finish line right towards the end of this feature. First car is starting to roll out onto the racetrack for the sportsmen. Race chasing for drivers and fans awards going out the door. $25 to the winner of this sportsman makeup feature, courtesy of Hanley Livestock Hauling. If the feature winner has the race chasing for drivers and fans stickers on both sides of the race car. Twenty-four cars will make up the starting field for this one, so it's a full field. This one's going to pay five hundred dollars to win. Thirty cars are on the entry list for tonight's feature. So, Bradley, uh, our feature winner here, and in the the feature winner for this one's going to have a chance to double up a little bit later on and pull in a thousand dollars to win tonight. That's not a bad night of racing for a sportsman driver. Yeah, it's not. Um, to, to have double features, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. I've a lot of times liked it more than just a one, one feature a night, and I've had success. Um, I had one sweep at Linda Speedway with a makeup feature and a regular event feature. Um, never did it at Lanco, which would, would be a big thing to put on my resume, but uh, maybe that'll be in the near future. How has the recovery been, and is there an update on when you might be back in the race car? Uh, no update right now. Uh, still just getting better every day. Uh, I have still some healing to do, and, and we'll see where that takes us. All right, buddy. Well, keep feeling well here. It's a pleasure to have you in the booth for sure. You're getting pretty good at this color commentary thing, but something tells me you're a little young to be not driving a race car. <laughs> yeah, I'm itching to get back in one. This, this isn't for me. Um, Gets me through the night, gives me something to do, but I'd rather be behind the wheel. Yep, looks like the full field of cars is out on the racetrack. They're going to start to get doubled up. Anthony Yerger, Jessica Moore going to make up the front row. Brett Cronrath and Mike Kreiser in row number two. Corey Schmuck, Clinton Hauser in row number three. Row four, Raymond Olinger and Courtney Cup. Chase Laser, Jesse Maurer, row five. David Ravel, Brian Sholley in row six. Nate Gibble, Robert Shanneman, row number seven. Row eight, Mike Miller and Dave Miller. Row nine, Chelsea Moore and Mike Spadafora. Max Fosnock, Jamie Flickinger in row 10. Jack Redkay, Matt Yo in row 11. Jason Swavely and Evan Lawrence will round out the field for this one. Bradley, one of the things out here today, it is very hot, a little bit of humidity, but they've also put a bunch of water down onto the racetrack. Does running these two extra features play a big role in how the track's going to develop over the course of the night? And I would imagine these sportsmen are going to go from running first to running last. This is going to be a huge difference in racetracks these guys see tonight. Yeah, it's going to change a lot, um, and you're going to see it pretty pretty easily how much the track's going to change. It looks pretty decent right now. Um, the bottom still looks like it's probably going to be the most dominant spot, but watch that top. It's going to come in quick, and uh, these veteran guys are probably going to know it and, and bite at it right away, and you'll see some guys coming to the front in a hurry.
Lights are out. 25 laps the distance. The sun's still out. We're ready to go. Feature racing number one of six here at the Clyde. Green flags in the air. We are underway. Good start for Anthony Yerger. He'll be your race leader going into turn one. Corey Schmuck battles up to the inside. He's already moved up a couple of spots now running in the third position. Caution flag is out. One car going around in turn two. That is the 23K of Courtney Cup. Courtney started in the eighth position. She'll have to head in and tag at the back of the field. Trouble for the 32. Looks like the chain coming off of that race car. That's Jack Redkay coming to a stop right in the middle of turns one and two. Still 25 laps. We did not get a lap in under green, so the field will reset with the exception of the cars that were involved or came to a stop as a result of the yellows. Courtney Cup to the back of the pack. Jack Redkay will be done for the feature event. Green flag in the air, let's try it again, take number two. Big move to the outside by Mike Kreiser. Almost gets up into the outside wall. Corey Schmuck Jr. back to the inside, gonna try to fight with Jessica Moore off of turn number two. Those cars make a little bit of contract trouble for the 22 down the back straightaway. That car slows, heads towards the outside. Also the 21 via David Ravel, oh man. Really getting the field bottled up. We'll see if Ravel's able to get to the infield. He is, we stay under green. Big move for Anthony Yerger. He's going to set the quickest lap of the race and check out by 1.3 seconds over second place running. Brett Cronrath, trouble for Jessica Moore in the 11M. That car getting bounced around a good bit. Here comes Jason Swavely flying through the field at the back of the pack. Back around the 12th position. Swavely already up behind the 15 of Robert Shanneman. That is the battle for 10th. Swavely to the inside. He'll pick up that spot. Trouble for the 83. That car going to pull into the infield and come to a stop. His feature race will be over as well. Five laps already in the books. Anthony Yerger, the race leader. Wow, what a move to thread the needle through traffic. But Corey Schmuck Jr. is all over his back bumper. Trouble as well for the 21D of Dave Williams. He comes to a stop in the infield. Little bit of a used car lot starting to develop. We've got a good battle here at the front of the field. Race leader off at turn four down the front straightaway. Anthony Yerger holds on to a four-tenth of a second lead over Corey Schmuck Jr. Mike Kreiser fighting his way through traffic. He's going to be joined by Jesse Maurer and Chase Laser, your top five. Couple of cars make contact off at turn two. That was a big hit for the number four of Mike Miller. He comes back onto the racetrack. The eight of Michael Spatafora pulls off. So does the 15 of Robert Shanneman. Now five cars stopped in the infield. We're only 10 laps in the books.
Bradley, is it is it tough as a driver to kind of get yourself worked up to run a feature when you haven't run the heats and kind of gone through the whole night yet, or is that just kind of organic? Oh, trouble for Corey Schmuck, turn four. That car, Corey Schmuck, dove to the inside of Anthony Yerger, tried to make the pass for the lead, clipped the infield tire. Pirouettes on the tail tank, but doesn't stick the landing. The Russian judge scores at a seven. Schmuck ends up on his side. Bradley, you're giving me the signal here. Tell me, what are you seeing out here? Uh, it looks like when uh, Corey and the five got together, the five's pipe is now off, and that's that's going to give no back pressure to that engine. He's not going to be able to take off. So it sounds like it's going to put him, if not completely out of the race, at least I would think out of the running on this one. Yeah, he's going to definitely be out of the running. Um, I'm sure he's going to try it. Um, just hope everybody behind him can hear it and, and knows what's going to happen on this restart. Kind of interesting to see the 14 of Jason Swavely swing right up alongside the five. Those are a couple of team cars. I would imagine Swavely's pulling up to try to give him a look at what could be an issue with that car. I would think as a driver, you can hear that. Yeah, you definitely can hear it. Um, you know exactly what's wrong, and you can see he's got his arm out beating on the pipe. It's held on there with springs, so if he can get it pushed back in place, those springs are going to hold it right where it belongs and, and back into the engine, and you'll hear that sound disappear, and that's when you know he's got it. So we'll see. That'll be one to follow. You can see him kind of shaking his hand off. The exhaust pipe is not exactly the coolest part of these race cars to be trying to grab a hold of and do a quick repair job on. It's not very often you get that beat back on there. Um, it looks like it's pretty far off and, and down on the on the motor. So he's going to have to try and race it like that, get the car wound up, and just hold on and salvage a, a couple positions. Is that one of those where you're just going to try to gas it up as early as you possibly can? I mean, you don't want to get called for jumping the start, but I guess if the car's not going to go, it might be a little bit of an advantage, I guess, and that you can at least get the start going earlier. Yeah, you can get your start going earlier, and everybody around you, I mean, he's got uh, Kreiser and, and Jesse Maurer and them right, right behind him, so they know what's going on. They're veteran drivers, and, and they're going to be able to compensate and, and get around him. whole lot of experience up there at the front of the field. Jurger and Mike Kreiser will make up row number one for the restart. Jesse Maurer and Chase Laser in row two. Brett Cronrath and Jason Swavely in row three. How about this one, folks? Swavely started in the 23rd position, and that 14 is already back up towards the front of the field. Yeah, that five just does not get going. It's going to bottle the field up. He pulls off into the infield. Kreiser able to hold on to the lead. Here comes Jesse Mauer to the inside of Chase Laser. That's going to be the battle for a second. Kreiser has not had the start to the 2020 season that he had hoped for, especially after his championship run one year ago. Mauer able to come cleanly around the 7L of Chase Laser. Big flip down the front straightaway. That's the 22 of Clinton Hauser, the 23K of Courtney Cup also involved. Good news from the racetrack. Hearing the driver, the 22, Clinton Hauser, is okay. Same cannot be said for the race car. Heavy damage to the top wing. The 23 of Courtney Cup also fairly heavy left front damage on that car. The 23K will need the hook. The 22 looks like he may actually try to push off here. Pretty wild barrel roll down the front straightaway. Go 
How about that one, race fans? 22, Clinton Hauser tagging into the back of the field. Barrel rolls it four times down the front stretch. He's going to keep on going. Sounds like that was just a case of cars running out of room there. Now with a, a pretty much a new field at the front here, Bradley, Mike Kreiser has not been, has not spent as much time at the front as he's been accustomed to all year. That 88 car has a couple of wins already in the division. What does that do to your psyche as a driver? You're not at your most confident, and you got one of the best cars in the field to your outside. Um, no one Kreiser, he knows exactly what he needs to do. Um, he, his car seems like to be handling very well. Same with Jesse. They're going to be the two to beat, I think. Um, Swaley seems like he might be playing it safe. He hasn't really tried the top yet, so look for him to start searching around. He's still got time, um, and he's sitting in a really good position. And uh, he, should, he should definitely get, get forward at least two or three more spots, I would imagine. And keep your eye on that 26 of Corey Schmuck, Jr. He is already back up to the 10th position on the restart. Green flag back in the air. Kreiser makes the fantastic jump. He is long gone. Now we're going to be two car lengths back as they go into turn one. Chase Laser holds on to third. Brett Cronrath, Nate Gibble, your top five. Swavely trying to make the inside work. Here's the 9G to his outside. That's Jamie Flickinger. Fantastic run for that car. What a move by Corey Schmuck. High off the corner. He was three wide through one and two. He's already up to the back bumper of Flickinger off the corner. Schmuck to the outside. Oh, trouble for Flickinger. The curse to the announcer strikes again. You talk good about a guy. He comes to a stop at the outside of turn two with 15 laps in the books. Took notice on the restart there. Swadley didn't get up to speed, and it seems like he's struggling to keep it up to speed. That's something we might want to keep looking at. He might be dropping out here soon with some mechanical issues. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen him run, at least try the top yet. That almost tells me that he's having a little bit of trouble getting that engine wound all the way up. Because if you're, if you're not able to keep it going, you're going to fall like a rock, it, taking the long way around the racetrack. Yeah, he's sticking to the tires and, and playing it um, more of a competitive thing. He, he's trying to keep the guys behind him and keep, them, keep their line dirty and uh, just, just keep that bumper wide. So once again, the makeup feature money, $25 race chasing for drivers and fans group. Award winner is going to be courtesy of Hanley Livestock Hauling to the feature winner of this one. Kreiser got a fantastic restart the last time out. I don't know that he skunked Jesse Mauer on the start, but it was pretty close. Kreiser are able to jump out to an early lead and run uncontested into turn one. Seeing a lot of cars that we're pretty familiar with at the front of the field here, Bradley. It's, I would imagine if you have to be quick off the truck, that really is when you'll see the cream really rise to the top. Yeah, a lot of these guys, they know they don't even really have to go out for practice. That, that's really just to make sure your motor runs. But um, they, they know exactly what this track looks like and, and can read it well enough to set their car up without ever even touching it. The 9G of Jamie Flickinger goes on the hook and will get the toe off the racetrack. Field's going to get doubled up and should get the one to go signal the next time by. Coming up next is the Hyper Racing 600 makeup feature from one week ago. 18 cars will be in the starting lineup for that one. So a little bit down on the car count. A couple of cars choosing not to return for this weekend's racing action, but we're still just past the halfway here in the Sportsman. 
Mike Kreiser and Jesse Maurer will restart at the front of the field. Chase Laser and Brett Cronrath in row two. Nate Gibble, Corey Schmuck Jr. in row number three. Mike Miller, Jason Swavely in row four. Green flag back in the air again. Cronrath doesn't come up to speed. That car sputtering pretty heavily. A little bit of contact to the back end from the 22 with Clinton Hauser. At the front of the field, Mike Kreiser holds on to the race lead. He's got a car length over Jesse Maurer. Call it three, four car lengths. Back to Chase Laser in third. He has Corey Schmuck Jr. all over his back bumper. Mike Miller down to the inside of Nate Kibble. Oh, Swavely thought about making a three-wide caution flag on the speedway. Trouble for the 22 of 22J, excuse me, of Raylan Olinger, who goes around in turn number two. So we got the lap in the books, so that means it'll be another double file restart. And Bradley, is the more we see the sun baking down on the racetrack, turn three is now completely, just about completely in the shade. The rest of the racetrack is in full sunlight. I would imagine this is going to maybe not completely dry out, but it is absolutely going to slick off here fairly quickly. Yeah, the quicker that sun gets down, the, the better it's going to stay. Um, it doesn't look that awful, really. Uh, I've seen it a lot worse. Um, they, they did a great job getting the track together to uh, hold up for these two extra races. I just hope these guys know that they're putting themselves in a, a long night with all these damaged race cars. Yeah, was, that's the, the big one is you still got to come back and run a second feature. And at least for the sportsmen, it's going to be the last one of the night. So they'll have some time. Yeah, you still have heat races there right in the middle. Um, you gotta, you got to be thrashing on the cars, and that's going to make you, your crew, everybody, it's going to wear you out a little earlier. So um, look for that second feature. Some of these guys might struggle a little bit. That will definitely be a storyline to follow up with tonight, especially with how hot it is out here right now. Hydration, it will be key for a lot of these teams tonight. Lights are out. We're ready to go back to green flag racing once again. Good start for Mike Kreiser. Jesse Maurer doesn't get the good jump. Here's Corey Schmuck to the outside of Chase Laser as they hit into one. Schmuck able to get the good bite off the corner. Cleanly makes the pass down the back straightaway. Swavely looks to the inside of Gibble into three. Kreiser holds on to the race lead. Jesse Maurer runs second. Corey Schmuck about a lane higher up the racetrack. Gaining just a little bit, maybe half a car length down the back straightaway. Slides it out high up against the outside wall. Gives all that space back. Field really settles in quickly. Single file. 18 in the books. Seven laps to go. Mike Kreiser holds on to a half second lead. It's another half second. Back to Corey Schmuck Jr. in third. Jason Swavely comes around. Chase Laser. That's going to be the best battle on the racetrack. The fight for fourth. Swavely holds on to the spot off the corner, actually starting to gain just a little bit on Corey Schmuck as Jesse Maurer also gaining in on the race leader. <coughs> Almost looks like Corey Schmuck is fighting that race car just a little bit, really pushing hard towards the outside wall on corner exit. Here's Swavely looking down to the inside. Shove Schmuck way up against the outside wall, almost making contact down the front straightaway. Good side-by-side -side battle for third. Schmuck got it right up against the outside fence. Loses the spot. Jason Swavely up to position number four. Twin sticks at the start finish line. Going to be two laps to go this next time by. White flag in the air. One lap to go. Mike Kreiser holds on to a six tenth of a second lead over Jesse Maurer. Jason Swavely running in third off a of turn number four. Checkered flag in the air. Mike Kreiser picks up the win in the number 77 over Jesse Maurer, Jason Swavely, Corey Schmuck Jr., and Chase Laser.
Oh, yeah. What's new? How about it, ladies and gentlemen? Big round of applause. Sportsman to feature winner, Michael Kreiser. We'll start the victory lane interviews down here with Mike. You're turning into quite the radio star here at the same time as you're, you're really kicking things into high gear with the sportsman. This thing looked really good right off the truck. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wasn't quite sure in the warm-ups, uh, but it landed up uh, pit crew forgot to put air pressure in. So <laughs> um, I, I was going into it blind. I thought, well, I'll just put in what I had at the, for the feature last week uh, to start, but um, it worked out pretty good. All in all, really a good way to start the night, and it's got to be a huge confidence boost now. The season hasn't started the way you wanted it to. Now you got to win and another crack at a total of 1000 bucks tonight. Yeah, we had um, definitely – Playing around with a couple things at the beginning of the season didn't quite work out. Um, made some adjustments and then came back and had a couple of top ten, top two finishes. Um, and now here we are. All right, buddy. Congratulations on the win. Who do you got to thank? Uh, I got to thank uh, B&K uh, Tree and Outdoor Services, um, Edge of Chaos with Rich Chaos, um, No Nonsense with Nip Nice, got Leany Shed Hog Farms, um, BC Fitness, uh, let's see here, well, who else have I got? Uh, Kim's Creations, and uh, we can't forget RT, uh, RTS Chassis. <laughs> and like my fans say up there, my family, I uh, can't forget my family and, and Robert as well for helping out every week. Um, trying to think if I have everybody. <laughs> um, oh, Bolts' RV Services and uh, Kelly's Racing Fuel. All right, once again, congratulations, Michael Kreiser, picking up the first feature win of the night. At 600cc performance, our roots run deep in CC racing. A leader in fuel injection, dyno tuning, wiring, and diagnostics. With over 15 years of experience in building and tuning, you can count on us to get you to the winner's circle. Whether it is diagnostic, sales, or service, 600cc Performance is your source for everything CC racing. Find out more at 600ccperformance.com. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I've taken 25 selfies in the last 10 minutes. 26. Yep, yeah, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Feature race number two coming at you. It's going to be the makeup for the Hyper Racing 600s. Here is the starting lineup in row number nine, starting in 18th position, the 16S of Brianne Whitmer and the 39 of Olivia Thayer. Row eight, 42K of Travis Kaiser and the 1E of Aaron Espenshade will start in the 15th position. Row number seven, the 11H of Holden Ekman and the nine of Austin Bishop. Row number six, the 17 of Brent Ely and the three of Jesse Maurer. Top 10 starters, the five of Heath Hanley and in ninth, the 2S of Mike Rutherford. Starting eighth, the 15P of Chris Pansner and the 11 of Dan Souter will start in the seventh position. Row number three, the 51 of Chris Gerhardt and the 88 of Nick Skias will start inside of row three in the fifth position. Time for the command to start engines. Drivers, start your engines. Remainder of the field, row number two, the one of Willer Kuski and the 71 of Brian Kramer. 75K of Jared Kunkel and the 11Z of Zach Light make up the front row. 25 laps the distance. It is time to go racing in the Hyper Racing 600s. Green flag is out. We are underway. What a good start for Zach Light. He's going to have Jared Kunkel to his outside. Top two checking out on the 71 of Brian Kramer. Big move by Willer Kuski. He's going to hold on to the fourth spot. Chris Gerhardt looks to his outside. Battle for the race lead off of turn number four into turn number one. Zach Light about a car width off the bottom of the racetrack. Jared Kunkel all over his tail tank as they get into turns three and four. Light slides up the racetrack just a little bit. Kunkel side by side down the front straightaway and into one. Those two cars will stay side by side for the race lead. Light slides up the track just a little bit, forces Kunkel up with him. That's going to let Brian Kramer start to catch in. Chris Gerhardt and Nick Ski is right there as well. What a duel for the lead. Zach Light, Jared Kunkel ran side by side for four straight laps. Now Jared Kunkel, the new race leader, into turn one. Nick Ski is in the 88, runs in the fourth position, and he is quickly gaining on the 71 of Brian Kramer. Chris Gerhardt, fifth. Dan Souter runs in the sixth position. Titus Battle going to be side by side entering turn number three. Mike Rutherford to the outside. Heath Hanley to the inside. Oh man, a little bit of right rear from Hanley up towards Rutherford as they came off the corner. Bradley, tell me, what are you seeing here, bud? Real bad vibration in the front of Chris Panzer's 15 car. Oh, trouble turn number four, able to keep it going. That's the one E of Aaron Espenshade. Caution flag rolls. Caution flag on the speedway. Trouble for the 1E of Aaron Espenshade. And Bradley, you called it. Seeing even under caution, that is a really nasty vibration in the front end of the 15. I would imagine that's not real comfortable around this place. No, it's not, especially up to speed. Um, it could be anything from uh, mud in the, in the wheel which is what it looks like it might be. The shock looks like it's on. The torsion bar looks like it's still intact. It could just be a, a big clump of mud in that wheel making it out of balance. It's almost what it looked like. You almost had that, you see the chrome spinning, and then every once in a while, that kind of rhythmic pattern of that where that clod of mud has jammed up the right front corner of that. The 39 of Olivia Thayer and the 11H of Holden Ekman pull off the speedway. So, race will be done for those two. Green.
green flag back in the air. Jared Kunkel leads the field back to green. Nick Ski is to the outside of Brian Kramer. Nice pass going into one by Nick Ski as he's up to third. Dan Souter going to be all over his back bumper as they get into turn number three. Zach Light losing just a little bit of ground to the race leader. Where is Nick Ski is going to make the move? Only eight laps in the books. He's got a lot of time. Souter has to jump on the brakes as Ski slides up back in front of him off at two. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all under a blanket as they head down the front straightaway. Zach Light runs just a little bit high. Uh, let Skias get inside of him, but not close enough to make the big move. That forces Skias onto the binders. Let's Dan Souter pass. Move Dan Souter up to third. Now he's going to attack Zach Light down the back straightaway. Chris Gerhardt now side by side with the 71 of Brian Kramer. That's going to be the battle for the fifth position. Souter again looks to the outside of Zach Light down the back straightaway. Couple of good two car battles towards the front of the field as we are approaching the halfway point. Souter now cleanly around the outside of Light as they head into three and four. Light slides up the racetrack, tried to throw the slider, wasn't close enough. Looks like there's debris, maybe a mud cover in the middle of one and two. Yeah, there's something up there on the racetrack. Several cars have hit it. Caution flag's gonna come out and that will be the reason for the caution. Debris on the racetrack, 11 laps to go. Jared Kunkel had a two and a half second lead over Dan Souter. And Dan is really, really aggressive on restarts. I don't know that that's what Kunkel wanted to see there. Yeah, them two guys, I'm pretty sure they're, they're really good friends and they, they battle each other like, like they're rivals. I mean, you're gonna see really good racing here for the win now. Zach Light has not had the quickest car on the racetrack, but he's been able to make it really wide. Holding, doing a nice job holding on to the third position, but now Nick Skias is gonna have to chance that outside lane, I would think. If he's gonna get around the 11Z and have a shot at the race win, he's gonna have to do it here on the restart. Green flag goes back in the air. Kunkel slides up the racetrack in front of Souter. Light runs to the inside. That is not the place to be right now. Nick Skias comes around him. Chris Gerhardt's going to try to get up to the outside as well. Here comes Rutherford and Hanley. Ten laps remaining and two of the best in the business here at the Clyde are going to have a crack at the top five. Jared Kunkel just set the fastest lap of the race. He has a half second lead over Dan Souter. Nick Skias runs in third, another half second back. Zach Light and Chris Gerhardt get a battle side by side, tail tank to front bumper down the front straightaway as lap number 17 goes on the scoreboard. That vibration issue continuing for Chris Panzer. You can see that right front way out of shape on that car. Looking back towards the front, side by side for the fourth position, Zach Light inside of Chris Gerhardt. Gerhardt threw the slider in one and two, made the pass cleanly. Now 19 laps on the scoreboard. Rutherford around Hanley. We'll see if Rutherford and Hanley are gonna be able to challenge Zach Light for that position inside the top five. Race at the front of the field isn't much of one. Dan Souter, the race leader, excuse me, Jared Kunkel, the race leader, caution on the speedway. Caution. So the race will come to an end for the 1E of Aaron Espenshade. He will finish in the 16th position. down to four laps remaining. It was a one second lead for Jared Kunkel. That's been erased, but it's gonna be a single file restart. So Dan Souter, I guess now is just reacting on that first motion of acceleration out of Jared Kunkel. Kunkel into the start box. He jumps on the loud pedal early, gets that car moving. Jared Kunkel is gone. Dan Souter gonna be Again, route one second as they cross the line. Nick Skias holds on to third. Here comes Rutherford inside of Zach Light going into three. 
Light running that line right in the middle of the racetrack. Opens the door for Hanley to come around Rutherford to the outside. Hanley trying to get the outside to work. Going to be two to go this time by Hanley now around the outside of Zach Light. What a drive for the five car. Side by side battle developing for the third position as well. White flag is out one lap to go. Race leader Jared Kunkel. Nine tenths of a second over Dan Souter. Checkered flag. First heat feature win of the night in the Hyper Racing 600s to the 75K of Jared Kunkel. Dan Souter, Nick Skias will be the podium. Chris Gerhart and Heath Hanley, your top five. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hyper Racing 600 feature winner, Jared Kunkel. All right, Jared, we'll get the interview out of the way here real quick for you. This thing unloaded quick. You were pretty good in hot lap session and then able to keep it out front for most of the show as well. Yeah, this car was really good tonight. Luckily, we have two features to run tonight, so we'll see what we can do in the next one. I say you got a chance to double up, pick up. I don't think it'll be quite $1,000, but a whole lot of money could be going out of here with this 75 team tonight. Yeah, it really helps. We're um, independent, owned, and operated, so anything helps. Um, I'd like to thank Kelly Racing Fuels, West Powder Coating, and everyone that helps on this thing every week. All right, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Jared Kunkel. At 600cc performance, our roots run deep in CC racing. A leader in fuel injection, dyno tuning, wiring, and diagnostics. With over 15 years of experience in building and tuning, you can count on us to get you to the winner's circle. Whether it is diagnostics, sales, or service, 600cc performance is your source for everything CC racing. Find out more at 600ccperformance.com.
Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I've taken 25 selfies in the last 10 minutes. 26. Yep, yeah, I'm definitely gonna call her right home. Welcome back. For those of you that are watching on the National Racing Network live stream, we'll have a pretty cool announcement coming up here before feature time. Right at the end of intermission, we'll get that announcement made. For those of you on the live stream and in attendance, for that matter. But now we are getting ready to go. It is time to kick off our regular Saturday night portion of the festivities. At this time, we would ask you all to please rise and gentlemen, remove your caps. We want to begin the night with a moment of silence and pay tribute to a member of the Lanco family that we lost earlier this year as we honor the life tonight of Gail Miller on Ovarian Cancer Awareness Night. We would ask for a moment of silence in her honor. Now to honor America, please welcome the mayor of East Greenville, Pennsylvania, Mr. Keith Gerhardt. Mr. Keith Gerhardt, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to go heat racing in the 125 and four stroke division. First heat race of the night coming out onto the speedway for the 125s and four strokes. Here is the starting lineup on the pole. The 3H is Zach Hollinger. 
on the outside of row number one, the 13 of Shane Davis. The four of Julie Avery and the 24 of Logan Road will make up row number two. Row three will have the three X of Kenny Bushy and the three of Mike Miller. Row number four, the five of Terry Ellix and the LR62 with Drayson Laser. 16 of Marty Bryan and the 112 of Dylan Yanks will round out the field here in heat race number one. Top six to qualify 30 cars on the entry list, 29 on the entry list. So five cars will be going home. Trouble on the racetrack off of turn number two for the pole sitter, Zach Hollinger in the number three H. That car comes to a stop. Tough break for Zach Hollinger. That car will have to head to the back. The car fired up, drove through turns one and two. He came to a stop at the exit of the corner. So the 3-H will head to the back. That's going to shuffle up the field. Put Shane Davis and Julie Avery on the front row. Logan Road and Kenny Bushy in row two. Mike Miller, Terry Alex, row three. Drayson, Laser, Marty Bryan in row number four. And then Dylan Yanks and Zach Hollinger will be the fifth and final row. The 600 makeup feature winner, Jared Kunkel, picking up $25 from the race chasing for drivers and fans bonus award program, courtesy of Viper Chassis. Field's gotten the one to go signal. We are ready to roll here in heat race number one for the 125s and four strokes. Green flag in the air. Shane Davis in 13 jumps out to the early lead. Big move by Hollinger down to the inside. He's up on Marty Bryan. Bryan and Hollinger try to charge their way to the front quickly. Logan Rose sliding back just a little bit as well. Going to be almost three wide off the corner. Hollinger to the inside of Road as they hit into turn one. Oh, man. Little bit of right side romance from the 3-H to Zach Hollinger. Slides Logan Road up the racetrack. Allows Marty Bryan to get down to the inside. Fight at the front of the field is going to be for the fourth position. That's Kenny Bushy, Marty Bryan, Zach Hollinger all fighting. Also, the four of Julie Avery. Bryan down to the inside. Hollinger looks even lower as they get into turn one. Big slider by Hollinger. Forces Avery. Oh, trouble for Marty Bryan. Hard into the outside wall. Trouble for the 16 of Marty Bryan. That car turned dead right on corner exit. Hearing that the steering wheel may have come off on the 16. That has to be a god awful feeling. You're coming off the corner and the steering wheels alone in your hands. Car turned hard right into the outside wall. Looks like the 16 will be able to refire and tag in at the back of the field. Single file restarts in the heat racing action. So still seven laps remaining here in heat race number one here on Viper chassis night. Shane Davis gonna hold on to the race lead. Mike Miller has the quickest lap of the race. He runs in second. He was only a quarter of a second back of Davis at the time of the caution. Julie Avery is going to restart third. Zach Hollinger fourth. 
Kenny Bushy will round out the top five. Green flag back in the air. Six are going to transfer right now. That's the 3X of Kenny Bushy. Terry Ellix in the five runs just behind those cars. Hollinger gets around Avery. Big slide into turns three and four. Tried to get to the inside of Shane Davis. New race leader Mike Miller. What a restart for the three. Hollinger really bottled the field up with that contact. Oh, Terry Ellix, Logan Road almost making contact off of turn number two. Marty Bryan trying to push his way back through the front of the field. Cross flags halfway. Five down, five laps to go. Battle for the sixth position right now. Still Terry Ellix with that spot. He's going to get to the inside. Oh, trouble. One car almost goes around. Everybody's going to keep the cars fired up. Marty Bryan had to slam on the binders. That's going to move the LR62 with Dre Laser up to the sixth position. Alex now looks to the inside of Julie Avery. That's the best run we've seen out of the five car this year. Two to go this time by Marty Bryan already back up around Logan Road in the 24. Trouble for the four. Julie Avery slow in turns three and four, able to keep the fire under it. That's going to let Laser start to catch in. Here comes Marty Bryan. High, wide, and handsome off the corner. White flag in the air, one lap to go. We'll stay with a battle for the transfer spot. Bryan looks to the inside, throws the slider going into one and two. Laser fights back to the outside. Checkered flag in the air. Contact down the back straightaway. Laser and Bryan make contact. Checkered flag did fly on Mike Miller. Drayson Laser and Marty Bryan make contact. Down the back straightaway. So Drayson Laser and Marty Bryan will fall to the back of the field. Here's the six to transfer. Mike Miller, Zach Hollinger, Shane Davis, Terry Ellix, Julie Avery, and Logan Road. Dylan Yanks, Kenny Bushy, Drayson Laser, Marty Bryan all will head to the Concy. Heat race number two for the 125s and four strokes now rolling out onto the racetrack. Chase Laser and Dick Huzzard will make up the front row. Riley Simmons and Justin Harrington in row number two. Ron Young and Brandon Shearer in row three. Holden Ekman, Zach Young in row four. Sam Borger and Cassidy Michael, the fifth and final row. to go signal given to heat race number two for the 125s and four strokes here on Viper chassis night. Field makes their way off at turn number two. Dick Huzzard, Chase Laser on the front row. Riley Simmons and Justin Harrington row two. Green flag in the air. Good start for Chase Laser. Not a very good start for the 29 of Brandon Shearer. That car slow on the giddy up. Cassidy Michael makes the nice move to the inside. 
One car goes around. Caution flag is out for the 0-4 of Sam Borger who goes around in turn two. Looks like Sammy just got bottled up on corner entry. The 29 of Brandon Shear did not get going off the line real well. Sort of bottled up the back of the field. The bumper cars started to happen and Sam Borger was the unlucky one to come to a stop. He brings out the caution and will head to the back. No laps on the scoreboard. We'll re-rack them and do it again. Lights are out. We're going to try it again here. Fields doubled up and ready to go. Only change in position. Sam Borger and Cassidy Michaels swap the positions at the back. Caution flag on the speedway. Debris on the back straightaway. That was the neck collar off the 56 of Dick Huzzard. bit more debris here on the front straightaway. So Dick Huzzard going to head to the back of the field now as well. So this will be attempt number three at the start. Still no laps in the books on heat race number two for the night. Green flag back in the air. Chase Laser able to hold on to the lead. Justin Harrington slides to the inside of Riley Simmons. Harrington picks up second. He's going to set sail looking for the race leader. Oh, man, big bounce off the infield tires for the three Y is Zach Young. At the front of the field battle for the race lead. Harrington was there, backs off just a little bit. Battle for the transfer spot. The 18 of Ron Young is going to give that up to the 29 of Brandon Shearer. Young slides up the racetrack just a little bit. That's going to let Zach Young get to his inside. Now Zach Young trying to push forward. Caution for Debris in turn one. is the 29 of Brandon Shearer that's going to come to a stop in the infield. So the debris belongs to that car. He will be a DNF on the heat race and he'll have to head to the Concy. 
Zach Young in the 3Y now is the final transfer spot. Two laps in the book. Sam Borger slots in behind Ron Young. Young going to try to get that final qualifying spot back from Zach Young. Green fly goes back in the air. Clean single file restart. Holden Ekman looks to the inside of Riley Simmons off of turn number two. Here comes Cassidy Michael to the inside. She's going to pick up the fourth spot as the battle starts to heat up for the race lead. Justin Harrington was there, tried to make the move to the inside on Chase Laser, not able to get the job done off a of turn four the last time. Harrington going to slot in two car lengths back. Holden Ekman runs third, Cassidy Michael fourth, Riley Simmons fifth. Six to the three Y is Zach Young. Sam Borger able to catch back up, but just not gaining enough ground to get to the back bumper of Young as they head down the front straightaway. Battle for the race lead. Harrington right back on the bumper of Chase Laser. Here comes the move to the inside of one and two. Laser tries to chop him off on corner exit. Harrington slides up in front. New race leader, Justin Harrington. Trouble for the 76, trouble for Justin Harrington. That car comes to a stop outside of turn number two. He looks down at the motor. Throws up his hands, not sure what the issue is on the 76, but Justin Harrington already with a couple of wins, including the Clyde Martin Memorial this season. That car comes to a stop outside of turn number two. We'll get the gate opened up, push off Harrington and Shear. Those cars will head back to the pit area. It will be a green, green, white checkered finish here. Three laps remaining. Field gets the one to go signal. They are just about ready to finish this heat race up. Green goes back in the air. That's gonna put Sam Borger up to the sixth and final transfer spot. Cassidy Michael looks inside of Holden Ekman. Oh, little bit of right side romance. Put Cassidy Michael up to second. Zach Young looks inside of Riley Simmons. Ekman trying to return the favor off at turn number two. Slides down to the inside of Cassidy Michael. One lap to go. White flag in the air. Sam Borger looks to the inside of Riley Simmons going into turn number one. Down the back straightaway. Now into three and four. Checkered flag is out. Chase Laser picks up the win over Cassidy Michael. Holden Ekman, Zach Young, Riley Simmons, Sam Borger, the sixth that'll transfer. Dick Huzzard, Ron Young, Justin Harrington, and Brandon Shearer all will head to the con seat. One more heat race coming up for the 125s and four strokes. Then it will be time for the 270s to make their first qualification heats.
heat race for the 125s and four strokes rolling out onto the speedway. Starting on the pole will be the number 19 of Matt Fernsler to his outside, the 26 of Tyler Martin. The 12 of Brent Shearer and the 17 of Tyler Armstrong to make up row number two. 22 with Jared St. John and the 62 of Eddie Nocera in row three. Nate Weidman, the 25W, the 26LR of Jeremy Eisenhower in row four. All alone in row number five, the 78 of Sarah Borer. Is out. We are underway here in heat race number three. A little bit of a disjointed start, but that's going to cause a caution in turn number one. One car going around. the 25W and Nate Weidman going around in the middle of turns one and two. Like I said, a little bit of a disjointed start. Max, or excuse me, Matt Fernsler able to get the good start. Tyler Martin will retake his spot on the outside. Weidman able to push off. He will tag in at the back of the field. Talked a little bit with Bradley Brown during the makeup features about how the track was taking shade and how the water levels would start to come back to the top. All of turn three in the vast, vast majority of the backstretch now in the shade. From the exit of turn four through turn two, all still in a good bit of sunlight, a little bit of shade just on the entry to turn one. So we will start to see the racetrack change a fair bit now as the sun goes down. Green flag is out again. Not a good restart or good start for Tyler Martin, but he slides down to the inside, loses the spot to Brent Shearer. Martin just not able to get that car going. Six currently the 62 of Eddie Nacera. Oh man, they're three wide coming off of turn number four. That's going to be a battle towards the transfer spots. Couple of cars making contact. That's Jeremy Eisenhower. Tyler Armstrong also playing that game just a little bit. Eisenhower has the transfer spot. No, Sarah comes around. He has it this time by. So Eddie Nair, Sarah now able to get away just a little bit for the 17 to Tyler Armstrong as Nocera looks to the inside of Jared St. John going into turn number three, slides up the racetrack, still side by side. That is the battle for the fifth position. Nocera completes the pass cleanly. Trouble for the 26 LR at Jeremy Eisenhower. Didn't we see that out of Kyle Larson last night? Hooks it into the infield, keeps the right foot down. Nice piece of driving Jeremy Eisenhower. Unfortunately, puts him all the way to the back of the pack. Six laps in the books. Brent Shearer running second by a half second to Matt Fernsler at the front of the field. Tyler Martin a full second back of Shearer. Another 1.4 seconds back to Nate Weidman in the fourth position. Nice recovery for the 25W from his turn one incident on the initial start.
twin sticks at the start finish line. Going to be two laps remaining. Now make it one to go for race leader Matt Fernsler. Brent Shear not catching up much at all. But that story could change in turns three and four. Fernsler comes across the line, takes the checkered flag, picks up the win over Brent Shear by half a second. Tyler Martin third, Nate Weidman fourth, Eddie Nocera fifth, and Jared St. John, the sixth and final car to transfer directly to tonight's feature event. Tyler Armstrong, Sarah Borer, and Jeremy Eisenhower will all head to the Concy. Want to remind everybody about our race chasing for drivers and fans awards tonight. For the regular features, four hard luck awards, one in each division, will be heading out the door courtesy of Shearer Welding, Ron Groff Trucking, Kenny Groff Trucking, and Ken and Janet. Also, five twenty-five dollar awards going to a random draw. The heat race winners that have the race chasing stickers, courtesy of Kim's Creations, the National Racing Network. Clyde Martin Memorial Speedway, Mike Knappenberger Photos, and Hanley Livestock Hauling. A couple of happy birthdays we want to wish tonight. Brent Ely celebrating a birthday today. Also, happy 16th birthday to Jonathan Hellinger and happy 50th birthday to John Wary from all of us here at Clyde Martin Memorial Speedway. Gotta say a special thanks to sponsor rockauto.com for providing wristbands for our racing events. Order auto parts online from rockauto.com 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Have them conveniently delivered to your door. Visit rockauto.com and when you order, make sure to let them know that you heard about rockauto.com right here at Lanco's Clyde Martin Memorial Speedway. do have a driver change coming from the last heat race to this heat race. Brent Shearer gonna have to make the quick change from one car to another. Here is the starting lineup for heat race number one. On the pole will be the 8S of Mike Skias and the 48 of Jonah Mech. Row number two, Mike Miller and Lee Reinhardt. Row number three, the 56 H is Zach Hollinger and the 5K of Mike Rutherford. Row number four, the 48 X of Alex Swift and the 53 of Brent Shearer. Row number five, the 13 S of Charles Hellinger and the 10 J of Jen Avery. Six to transfer, 10 laps the distance. Now Brent Shearer in the 53. In that car pushing off, he's going to be good to go and he'll take his regular spot in the lineup. Green flag is out. We are underway. Wow, what a big power move to the inside by the 4R Ali Reinhardt. Huge move to the front of the field. Reinhardt picks up a couple of spots on the drop of the green flag. He currently runs second. Mike Rutherford down to the inside of the two of Mike Miller. He's gonna come around, claim the spot. Now Rutherford slides high off at turn two. Big drive off the corner for the 5K. He's already hunting down the 48 of Jonah Mech. Rutherford to the outside. You see a four sale sign on the car. No better way to get a race car sold than to park it in victory lane, that's for sure. Rutherford making the high line work. He's up to the third position and rapidly catching Lee Reinhardt. Pretty cool story on the 8S of Mike Skias. Mike wrecked very hard earlier this season. 
fresh body work on that car as Rutherford comes to the inside of Reinhardt. Picks up the second position. Clean body work. Mike Skia says, why get it wrapped? Let's let the kids draw all over it. So in the pit area tonight, they put out a bunch of Sharpies and said, any kid in the pit area, come draw on my race car. So the kids have something to root for now at the front of the field. But Mike Rutherford is catching that 8S in a hurry. The gap was three-tenths of a second the last time by. Call it half a car length, one and a half tenths. They're going to get the two-to-go signal this time by from Chief Starter Mike Fry. Rutherford right there on the back bumper. The battle for the final transfer spot, the 53 of Brent Shearer has it. He's charged from the eighth position up to sixth. Rutherford looks inside of Ski. It's going into turn one. White flag is out, one to go. Rutherford completes the slider, slides just a little bit high. Skius throws the slider back. Drag race to the line. What a finish. Timing and scoring says Mike Rutherford by 26 one thousandths of a second. Fantastic side-by-side -side finish. Mike Rutherford gets the win over Mike Skius. Lee Reinhardt, Mike Miller, Jonah Meck, and Brent Shearer will be the sixth at transfer to the A main. Alex Swift, Charles Hellinger, Zach Hollinger, and Jen Avery all will have to head to the Concy. Heat race number two out onto the speedway. Starting lineup for this one on the pole will be the 34 of Christy Swigert. And in the number 55, Mr. Viper Chassis, Pete Skias. Heath Hanley in the 82, owned by Gary Miller, whose late wife Gail were paying tribute to with tonight's racing events. Heath will line up in the third position to his outside, the 22J of Josh Olinger. The 1L of Dave Labe and the 3S of Nick Skias will make up row number three. Row four to the 49W of Johnny West and the 8Z of Nate Gibble. 17J of Jared Imler and the 647 of RJ Rossi will round out the field. That 647 machine already has a feature win in it tonight, or this season, I should say, with Brent Shearer behind the wheel. Shearer now piloting the 53 car. Rossi back into the 647. Green flag is out. Big move, Jared Imler to the inside. He's going to force it three wide off the corner. There are still three wide down the front straightaway. How did they not wad up a bunch of race cars there? Little bit of trouble for the 8Z. That car is going to half spin and come to a stop. 8Z and 8 Gibble comes to a stop at the exit of turn two. Caution flag is out. No laps are scored. flag back in the air. Oh, a little bit of contact in the back of Heath Hanley. Hanley spins off at turn number four. He had help. Looked like that one might have been the 1L of Dave Labe getting into the back of the 82.
So the 82 of Heath Handley will head to the back of the pack. Have the official call from race control, the 1Z of Dave Labe going to the back with Heath Hanley for the contact in turn number four. So the 82 and the 1L both head to the back. The 82 for causing the caution with a spin. The 1L for getting the 82 turned around. Lights are out. We're ready to go racing again. Christy Swigert, Pete Skias still going to make up the front row. Much better start that time for Pete Skias. Here comes Nick Skias and Jared Imler as well. Top four all get a good start. The 49W with Johnny West going to hold on to the fifth position. 22J of Oling are getting bounced around like a pinball. That car slides to the back of the pack. Pete Skias around the outside takes over the race lead from Christy Swiger. Nick Skias in the three S goes even higher. He's gaining quickly on the 55. Oh, man, a little bit more contact towards the back of the pack. The 8Z has the front wing at a really not good angle for aerodynamic purposes, more of a snow plow. That car running in the eighth position. One goes around turn two, that's Heath Hanley. Trouble again for the 82. That is strike number two on the 82 with Heath Hanley. He'll tag in at the back of the field. Heath with a very good run in the first feature event of the night for the Hyper Racing 600s. So three laps in the books. We're going to get ready to go racing again. One more heat coming up for the 270s. Then it'll be the Hyper Racing 600s for three heats. Green flag back out. Dave Lay big charge into the back of the 22J of Olinger. Haley looks to the inside of Lay going down the front straightaway. That racing a little bit further back in the pack at the front of the field. We're starting to see that second groove come in. Nick Ski is high, wide and handsome off of turn number two. Pete Ski is runs about the middle groove of the racetrack. Cross flags are out. Halfway home, the rest of the field just about running down on the low side. You can see that. Oh man, big wiggle for RJ Rossi. He's hard into the outside wall. Able to get it off the fence. Keep your eye on the 647. All oh, trouble for Nick Skias. He got down inside of Pete Skias. Tried to make the dive bomb move into three. Had to jump on the binders. Now two laps remaining. The sixth and final transfer spot is going to be the 8Z of Gibble. Hanley rapidly catching that car, but it may not be enough. The battle for the race lead intensifies. White flag is out. One lap to go. R.J. Rossi pulls off into the infield. Oh, big loop out of the 49. Oh, and Hanley spins it again. Caution flag. Checkered comes out. Checkered comes out before the caution flag. So Pete Skias is going to pick up the win in the heat race. Nick Skias finishing second. That's twice in that heat race. Heath Hanley could have absolutely piled into somebody that was sideways in the corner and spun his own car to sacrifice and save that driver.
So Pete Skias picks up the win in the heat race by one-tenth of a second over Nick Skias, Christy Swigert, Jared Imler, Nate Gibble, and Johnny West, the top six that will transfer to the A-Main. out onto the racetrack. Here is your starting lineup. The 4K of Trent Eberhardt and the 5A of Anthony Yerger will make up row number one. The 11 of Mike Urich and the 88D of Andrew Dietrich in row number two. 20 of Corey Schmuck Jr. and the 62-8 Chakoti Hibschman in row three. 29J Danny Lane Jr. and the 21D of Dave Williams in row four. All alone shotgun on the field. The 92 with Jason Swavely. So the field getting doubled up here. We should be ready to go this next time by the flag stand. With the high groove coming in, don't count out Jason Swavely coming from the back. That is a driver who has made a name for himself banging the boards and really running the highest you can go here at the Clyde. Lights are out. We're ready to go racing. Everhart and Jurger in row number one. Green flag is out. Here comes Jurich down to the inside. Tried to get inside of Anthony Jurger. Oh, one car way up on the fence. How did he keep his foot in it? Wow, what a drive by Cody Hipschman. He's doing it again in turns three and four. That car has a broken left front. Tough break for Cody Hibschman. Holy cow. So one lap in the books, hearing that the lineup is good. Have to get the four-wheeler unhooked from the back bumper of the 62. One lap in the scorebook, so we're going to have a single file restart here. Everhart, Urich, Jurger, Dietrich, and Schmuck, your top five. Danny Lane Jr. holds on to the final transfer spot, but Jason Swavely's going to be all over his back bumper. Lane looks inside. Swavely to the outside. Oh, what a drive off the corner by Jason Swavely. He's able to pick up that position with ease over Danny Lane. In fact, he's going to go to work now already on Corey Schmuck Jr. in the 2020. 
Schmuck hung up just a little bit behind Andrew Dietrich. Slides up in front of Swavely. Swavely crosses him over down the straightaway. Corey Schmuck Jr. back to sixth, losing just a little bit of ground. Danny Lane catching up to him in a hurry. Swavely looks to the inside of Dietrich. He throws the soft slider and turns one and two. Lane getting up on the back bumper of Corey Schmuck Jr. down the front straightaway, already halfway home. Here's Lane to the inside looking for the final transfer spot. Slide, job turn for Schmuck, crosses back over. Schmuck clips the infield tire, slides up the racetrack. Oh, Lane right back into the back bumper. What a slider by Corey Schmuck. Danny Lane stuffs it right back in inside of turn four. Fantastic battle for the transfer spot. Lane up against the outside wall. Schmuck slides just a little bit, caught the infield tire. That's going to let Lane open the gap back up. Two laps remaining. Danny Lane Jr. holding on to the final transfer spot. Trent Eberhardt with a 1.3 second lead over Mike Urich. Make it Jason Swavely. Swavely gets around Urich going into three. Nice slider by Jason. White flag is out. One lap to go. The battle for a second heating up as Trent Eberhardt going to hold on to the race lead off at turn number four. Checkered flag in the air. Trent Everhart picks up the win over Jason Swavely, Mike Urich, Andrew Dietrich, Anthony Yerger, and Danny Lane Jr. Those six drivers transfer to the A. Corey Schmuck Jr., Dave Williams, and Cody Hibschman all will head to the Concy. The 62 with Cody Hipschman banged up enough that that car needed the trailer to get off the racetrack. Heck of a drive. Tried the Logan CV line off the catch fence in turn two, but again, not able to stick the landing. Heat race number one for the Hyper Racing 600s already ready to go green. Heath Hanley leads Aaron Espenshade, Chris Gerhardt in the 51, Chris Panzer, Jared Kunkel all in this one. What a jump for Heath Hanley. He checks out. He's got five car lengths over Chris Gerhardt as they exit turn four to put lap number one on the board. Gerhardt holds on a second over Espenshade, Panzer. Oh, almost a little bit of contact there between Jared Kunkel and Mikey Smith. Big slide of turns three and four. Nice pass, Mikey Smith. Smith able to pick up the spot. All will transfer. No Concy tonight in the Hyper Racing 600s. Smith and Kunkel trading sliders each end of the racetrack. That's going to be the battle for the fifth position. Gerhardt, Espenshade, and Panzner dueling as well. Good battle for second. Good battle for fifth. But Heath Hanley is long gone at the front of the field. In fact, called the lead a full straightaway. 1.9 seconds over Chris Gerhardt. Last time I caution turn four, turn three, excuse me. The 75 of Jared Kunkel slides to a stop. Also, Nick Skias and the 42 
of Travis Kaiser also coming to a stop. So trouble for the 88 and Nick Ski as that car pulls off into the infield. He will not continue. Field ready to go back to green. Ski is out of the race. Travis Kaiser at the back of the field. Those are the two cars that stopped. Jared Kunkel will run in the sixth position. The two second lead for Heath Hanley is erased. Oh, Espen Shade up into the outside wall. Able to get it off the fence, but he's going to get back up into it in turns three and four. Aaron Espen Shade falls all the way to the back of the field. He's going to go back to doing battle with Jared Kunkel towards the back of the pack. At the front, the lead again already up to two thirds of a second for Heath Haley over Chris Gerhardt. Chris Pansner runs into third position. Here comes Mikey Smith looking to get up on the back bumper of Pansner. Two to go this time by. Call it one lap remaining for race leader Heath Hanley as he comes across the start finish line. Everybody gapped out pretty cleanly here. At least one car length, car to car throughout the field. Checkered flag in the air. Heath Hanley picks up the win in heat race number one over Chris Gerhardt, Chris Pansner, Mikey Smith, and Jared Kunkel, the top five. Aaron Espen Shade, Travis Kaiser, Nick Skias round out the field. Second of three heat races for the 600s rolling out onto the racetrack. Following the Hyper Racing 600s, three heat races for the sportsmen and three consolation races will be coming up as well. We'll have Consies in the 125 and four stroke division, the 270s, and also the sportsmen. So one of the drivers lost a race receiver on the racetrack, and I believe our crack detective track crew has found the, well, we'll say the remains of the race receiver on the back straightaway. So they get that debris picked up, and we're going to be ready to go here. Trouble for the 11H. Holden Ekman pulls off into the infield. Here is the starting lineup for heat race number two. The 61 of Ryan Kunkel and the one of Willer Kuski will make up the front row. Brianne Whitmer and Tyler Ulrich in row number two. Jesse Maurer and Austin Bishop in row three. Row number four, the 11-H of Holden Ekman. Green flag is out. We are underway. What a start for Ryan Kunkel. Here comes Willer Kuski, though. 
Erkuski was up on the back bumper. Here's Brienne Whitmer looking inside. Trouble turn two. Caution flag. The nine of Austin Bishop goes around in turn number two. We did not get a lap in the books, so they'll re-rack them, double them up, and get ready to go again. So Bishop slides in at the back of the field. Everybody else is going to slide up one position from their original lineup spots. That's going to move Dan Souter to sixth, Holden Ekman to seventh. Ekman also out of the race here, so only Souter in the 11 is going to change spots. They're going to be three, almost four wide off at turn number four. Dan Souter makes the big move to the outside. He's around Brienne Whitmer, trying to get around the three of Jesse Maurer as well. Move Dan Souter up to the fourth position. What a fantastic drive on the start by Dan Souter. At the front of the field, Willer Kuski gets around Ryan Kunkel, sets the fastest lap of the race. Erkuski high, wide, and handsome. That car looks fantastic on the outside. Kunkel running about half a car with lower on the racetrack. The 42 with Tyler Ulrich running in the third position. Fourth is Souter, fifth to the three of Jesse Maurer. Willer Kuski looking really strong at the front of the field. One of the best seasons in a couple of years for that one car. And the trend will continue tonight as that car runs very strongly into turn one. The lead's 1.3 seconds over Ryan Kunkel. Dan Souter through the slider on Tyler Ulrich and turns one and two, going to cross him back over. Ulrich returns the favor in three and four. Souter's going to do it back in one and two. Souter holds the inside lane, lets Ulrich come past. Gains the big bite off the corner. Not quite close enough to make the move, though. So Dan Souter going to hold on to the fourth position. Race leader Willer Kuski off at turn number four. White flag is out, one lap to go. What a drive for the pilot of the number one. Checkered flag in the air. Willer Kuski picks up the win over Ryan Kunkel. Tyler Ulrich able to hold on to third over Dan Souter. Jesse Maurer fifth. Austin Bishop sixth. Brienne Whitmer seventh. Holden Ekman was a did not start in that heat race.
number three for the 600s, getting the green flag. Zach Light, Mike Rutherford lead the field to green. Rutherford all over the back bumper of the 11Z. Cody West, Olivia Thayer, Brian Kramer, Brent Ely, and B.J. Antonio round out the field. Oh, man, Light slides right up, chops off the front bumper of Rutherford. Able to hold on to the spot. Thayer dueling back there with B.J. Antonio and Kramer. Big slider out of Rutherford in one and two. Zach Light gets the cleaner drive off the corner, but he knows Rutherford's there now. Rutherford going to throw the slider back in one and two. Light going to cross him right back under. Nice drive off at turn number four. Going to open the gap just a hair for Zach Light, but, man, Rutherford just gets such a run at the top of the racetrack. Here comes the slider in three and four. Rutherford has to back out of it. Already halfway home. Not a lot of change in the front of the field. Rutherford and Zach Light continuing to trade the sliders and the crossovers. The 17. Oh, trouble for B.J. Antonio. He slows off a of turn number four. Pulls it into the infield. His heat race is done. A little bit of fluid coming out of the back of that race car. Rutherford way up against the outside fence. Light tried to push him even higher. Rutherford throws the slider again. Crossover move by Zach Light. That's, they've been doing this every lap for seven straight laps now. Rutherford finally able to come cleanly around the outside. Zach Light able to catch back in just a little bit. White flag is out. One lap to go. Rutherford opens the gap up off at of turn number two. Through turns three and four, checkered flag in the air. How about that one? One minute, 59 seconds to pick up the heat race win for Mike Rutherford over Zach Light, Cody West, Brent Ely, Brian Kramer, and Olivia Thayer, the sixth that finished. B.J. Antonio is a did not finish in seventh. Number one, heading out onto the racetrack. Here is your starting lineup. On the pole, the three yes to Jeremy Eisenhower. Starting in second to 32 with Jack Redkay. 26 to Corey Schmuck Jr. in the 7L and Chase Laser will make up row number two. The 30 to Ryan Heckman in the 13B a Matt Yo in row number three. Row four, the 21V a David Ravel and the five of Brett Cronrath. Fifth and final row, the 10Z of Brian Sholly and the 15 of Robert Shanneman. Trouble for the 32. That car comes to a stop in turns one and two. Jack Redkay scheduled to start on the outside of the front row. That car does not fire off. I believe he's going to have to head to the back of the field. Start zone green flags in the air. We're underway.
Jr. Quickly up onto his back bumper, side-by-side -side battle between David Ravel and Ryan Heckman for the fourth position. Top six are going to transfer in this one. Currently, that spot held by the 10Z of Brian Sholley. He'll have the five of Brett Cronrath closing in on his back bumper. Schmuck getting closer and closer as they work their way through turns three and four. Ravel way up against the outside fence. Brian Sholley not able to gain any ground on Ryan Heckman. Brett Cronrath closing just a little bit, but he's only gaining about a half a tenth every lap. A little bit of a bobble there by the 10Z. Eisenhower, Schmuck, Laser, Ravel, Heckman, Sholley, the top six. Cronrath and Robert Shanneman holding in tough in seventh and eighth, but they're just not close enough. Sholley may be held up just a little bit by the 30 of Heckman, but nice drive off the corner. By that Tim Schottklab's Kim's Creations number 30 entry, able to open the gap back up. Ravel catching in quickly onto the back bumper at Chase Laser. That's going to be the battle for the third position as the race leaders catching traffic. Eisenhower looks inside of Matt Yo. White flag is out one lap to go. Corey Schmuck Jr. going to try to get to the outside of Eisenhower off at of turn two. Yo bottles him up. Trouble for Eisenhower and Schmuck. Both cars make contact. That's going to let Laser the inside. Schmuck pushed way to the outside. Who's going to win it? Give it to Jeremy Eisenhower. What a finish off of turn four. Chase Laser comes home second. Corey Schmuck third. David Ravel fourth. Heckman and Sholley hold on to the final two transfer spots. Brett Cronrath, Robert Shanneman, Jack Redcray, and Matt Yo will all have to head to the Concy. See the ladies down here out in the grandstand selling tonight's 50-50 tickets. Tonight, the proceeds from the 50-50 will benefit the Ovarian Cancer Foundation. That money will be directly donated tonight to that foundation in the name of Gail Miller. Pretty special deal we'll have going on at intermission. Several drivers will be out doing a helmet pass through the grandstands to raise money for the Ovarian Cancer Foundation. We will also be joined at the flag stand by Heath Hanley, who will tell everybody here who may not have known Gail as well as some of us a little bit about who Gail Miller was and the legacy that she will leave behind. We are also privileged to welcome Gail and Gary Miller's children who will be here at intermission as well. So heat race number two for the sportsmen ready to roll out onto the racetrack now. On the pole for this one will be the N8 of Nate Gibble. Starting to his outside, the 77 of Mike Kreiser. Row number two, the 21D of Dave Williams and the 14M of Chelsea Moore. The 53S to Shannon Slaughter and the 22S to Brett Scully will make up row number three. The 14 to Jason Swavely and the 16P of Patrick Kern in row number four. And row five, the four of Mike Miller and the 22 of Clinton Hauser. Trouble for the 22S. That car comes to a stop on the front straightaway. That's Brett Scully. Stops just off of turn four. So the 22 will get the push off the racetrack, unable to turn a lap. 
So Brett Scully will head to the pit area, scheduled to start in the sixth position. That'll move Jason Swavely to the outside of row three. Put Patrick Kern and Mike Miller in row four. Clinton Hauser will start all alone now in row number five. Looks like another car not able to answer the bell on this one. The 14M at Chelsea Moore will be a did not start as well. So Chelsea Moore was scheduled to start in the fourth position. So that'll promote Shannon Slaughter to fourth. Jason Swavely now up to fifth. Kern to sixth. Mike Miller to seventh. Trouble for the 22 with Clinton Hauser. That car does not come up to speed. Green flag in the air. We're underway. Nate Gibble holds on to the race lead. Mike Kreiser about a car length back. Kreiser already has a feature win tonight. Closing in quickly is Jason Swavely in the 14. What a move by Patrick Kern outside of turns one and two. He picks up the fourth position from Mike Miller. Kreiser all over the back bumper of Gibble. What a drive by Swavely off the corner. He's right there as well. Top three under a blanket. This one's going to get good. Kreiser looks inside of turns one and two. Swavely looks to the outside. Swavely able to get the pass made there. Jumps on the biters just a hair. Doesn't want to get into the back of the N8. He'll set the pass up for the next corner. Gibble runs the low side. Swavely up high. Big drive off the corner. Looking inside, Jason. Swavely is going to be your new race leader. Patrick Kern follows the same line. Tries it on Mike Kreiser. Those cars almost make contact off the corner. Gibble comes back to the inside of Swavely. Great racing here in the top four. Top six will transfer out of this one. Currently, that's the 53 of Shannon Slaughter. No challenge coming from Dave Williams, so we'll keep our attention at the front of the field. Swavely around the high side, able to hold on to the race lead. Curtin runs the high side. Now he's going to look down, throw the, tried to throw the slider on Kreiser. Makes a little bit of contact with one of the infield tires. Saw the hands cross up. Nice, saved by the 16P of Patrick Kern. We're down to two laps remaining. Swavely holds a 1.3 second lead as the white flag flies. Call the lead all the way out to a one and three quarter seconds over Nate Gibble. Mike Kreiser catching quickly, checkered flag in the air. Jason Swavely picks up the win in heat race number two. Gibble able to hold on for second, Kreiser third. Patrick Kern fourth, Mike Miller, Shannon Slaughter. The final car is to transfer. Dave Williams, Brett Scully, Clinton Hauser, Chelsea Moore all have to run the Concy. Several of these cars had issues in the first feature event of the night, including Chelsea Moore and Clinton Hauser. So we'll see if they're going to be able to get those cars repaired in time to run the consolation race. With 12 cars scheduled to start tonight's consolation race and only six are going to transfer, the odds are pretty good. We may not have a sportsman consolation by the time some of these cars are done here. One more heat race coming up for the sportsman, then it will be consolation time. Here is the starting lineup for Sportsman Heat Race number three. On the pole, 647 of R.J. Rossi and to his outside, the 88 of Jesse Maurer. 23K of Courtney Cup and the 22J of Raymond Olinger in row number two. The 11M of Jessica Moore and the 5A of Anthony Yerger in row number three. 83 of Evan Lawrence and the 19M of Max Fosnott in row four. Row five, 9G of Jamie Flickinger and the eight of Michael Spatafora. of R.J. Rossi and the 22J of Raymond Oling are not out on the racetrack yet. The 22J also had a problem in the feature. I believe R.J. Rossi did as well. 
pulling into the infield, the 83 of Evan Lawrence. That car comes to a stop. Looks like the chain is dragging on the 83 machine, so he'll have to be pushed off and attempt to qualify through the consolation. That car was scheduled to start in the seventh position. It'll move Max Fosnock up to seventh, Jamie Flickinger to eighth, Michael Spatafora to ninth. Only seven cars out on the racetrack. Jesse Maurer, Courtney Cup on row number one. Jessica Moore and Anthony Yerger in row two. Max Fosnott, Jamie Flickinger in row three. Spatafora all alone in row number four. Six will transfer, seven will start, ten laps the distance. Quick move inside by Jessica Moore. A little bit of contact between the 9G of Jamie Flickinger and the five of Anthony Yerger. Flickinger looks inside of Moore going into three and four. That car got bottled up big time. Oh, what a piece of driving by Michael Spatafora. Flipped that car sideways, got back in the throttle, cleanly around Jessica Moore. Move Michael Spatafora into the transfer spot. Towards the front of the field, Jesse Maurer setting quick lap after quick lap. Two-thirds of a second back, Courtney Cup runs second. Anthony Yerger completes the pass outside of Jamie Flickinger for third. Field cleanly single file at this point. Jesse Maurer keeps ticking off fast lap after fast lap. 11.56 seconds for the pilot of the number 88. Courtney Cup, 1.4 seconds back the last time by. We'll see what it is this time. One and three quarter seconds. Maurer gaining three tenths a lap on the driver of the 23K as Anthony Yerger closes quickly on Courtney Cup's 23K machine. Six laps are in the scorebook. Jamie Flickinger runs fourth. Max Fosnott fifth. Michael Spatafora holds on to the sixth position. Jurger now going to try to get inside a cup. Oh, nice job. Courtney Cup slams the door. Pretty close to some left side loving out of the 23K. Able to hold on to the spot. Jurger pushing high to the outside. Cup slides up the racetrack again. That opens the door for Jurger. White flag is out, one to go. Courtney Cup slams the door, closed again. Jesse Maurer through turns three and four. Checkered flag in the air. Jesse Maurer claims the win. Great battle for second. At the line, give it to Courtney Cup. That finish was incredibly tight. Courtney Cup holds on to second. Anthony Jurger third. Jamie Flickinger fourth. Max Fosnott and Michael Spatafora will be the sixth to transfer. Jessica Moore, RJ Rossi, Raymond Olinger, Evan Lawrence all will head to the Concy. Three consolation races coming up before we hit the intermission period. First one of those will be the 125 and four stroke division, followed by the 270s. Eleven cars scheduled to take the green here in the 125s and four strokes. Here is the scheduled starting lineup. The 112 of Dylan Yanks and the 56 of Dick Huzzard will make up row number one. 17 of Tyler Armstrong and the 3X of Kenny Bushy in row number two. 18 of Ron Young and the 26 LR of Jeremy Eisenhower in row three. The LR62 with Drayson Laser and the 76 of Justin Harrington in row number four. Row 5 to 78 of Sarah Bohr and the 16 of Marty Bryan in row number 5. And all alone in row 6 to 29 of Brandon Shearer. On any other night, this could be a top 12 starting lineup in a feature event here in the 125 and four-stroke division. Justin Harrington won the Clyde Martin Memorial just about a month ago. 
he will roll off in the eighth position in this heat race. Marty Bryan is the defending champion of the four stroke division. Marty's going to start in the 10th position. Trying to get the field lined up correctly here. Lights are out. We are ready to go. Ten laps the distance here in the consolation race for the 125 and four strokes. Six will transfer. Currently, that's Jeremy Eisenhower. Green flag is out. We are underway. Big move by Justin Harrington to the outside. He's going to be up to fourth. Make it almost third off of turn number two. Marty Bryan comes right with him. Justin Harrington to second. Harrington looks low now on Dylan Yanks off at turn four. One lap in the books. Justin Harrington comes from eighth to second and two one hundredths of a second off the lead. Give it to him off at of turn two. What a drive by Justin Harrington. Marty Bryan coming right with him. At the front of the field, Harrington, Bryan, Yanks, Hazard, your top four. Side-by-side -side battle between Kenny Bushy and Brendan Shearer for fifth. All alone in the seventh position is the 17 of Tyler Armstrong. He is not gaining enough ground to get into tonight's feature. Little bit of contact between Dick Hazard and Brandon Shearer. That's going to be the battle for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth when you include Dylan Yanks in the 112. Shearer looks inside. Oh man, big right side contact from Shearer on Dick Hazard. Now Bushy makes contact with the left side. Dick Hazard getting beaten around like a pinball. Shearer comes around. Yinks, he's going to pick up the third position. Bushy comes around, picks up fourth. Yinks comes across the line and fifth that last time by. Six is going to be Dick Hazard. Drayson Laser going to be all over his back bumper. Keep your eye on the 56 and the 62 LR. That's the battle for the transfer spot as we're coming down to two laps remaining. Hazard able to hold on. Laser slides just a little bit high. In fact, Dick Hazard closing in now on Dylan Yanks. That 112 does have a little bit of a handling issue. You can see he's got a handful. White flag is out one lap remaining. Hazard slides just a little high. Big contact with Laser. Caution flag is out on the speedway. Yellow flag is out with one lap to go. Dick Hazard comes to a stop outside of turn four. And very heavy contact from the LR62, a Drayson Laser. Still one lap to go. Tyler Armstrong able to get a round laser in the exchange. So Justin Harrington and Marty Bryan, Brandon Shearer, Kenny Bushy, Dylan Yankston, Tyler Armstrong, the sixth that'll transfer. The 62 LR, LR of Drayson Laser will restart in the seventh position. The 56, a Dick Hazard on the hook. Tough break for that car. He was in a transfer spot the entire race. Contact late, sends him around. Dick Hazard goes from making the show to the first car to DNQ.
Lights are out. It is going to be a green and white flag together next time they come past the start finish line. Justin Harrington's lead of 2.6 seconds is erased by the caution. Marty Bryan going to be on his back bumper. Don't count out the 29 of Brendan Shearer. Tyler Armstrong in the 17 holds on to the transfer spot. We'll see if he's going to come under attack. Green and white are out. Going to be the checkered flag this next time by. Off at turn number four, Justin Harrington is going to pick up the win over Marty Bryan, Brandon Shearer, Kenny Bushy, Dylan Yingst. Falls back just a little bit. Kenny Bushy fourth, Dylan Yingst fifth, Drayson Laser holds on to sixth. Tyler Armstrong, Sarah Borer, Ron Young, Jeremy Eisenhower, and Dick Huzzard are all a DNQ. Next consolation race to pull out onto the racetrack will be in the 270 division. The 48X of Alex Swift and the 1L of Dave Lay will make up the front row. 20 of Corey Schmuck Jr. and the 13S of Charles Hellinger in row number two. 22J of Josh Olinger and the 21D of Dave Williams in row three. Row four, Zach Hollinger and Jen Avery. Row number five will have the 82 of Heath Hanley and the 647 of RJ Rossi. The 62H of Cody Hipschman has been scratched for the rest of the evening. The highlights already up on the track Facebook page, but unfortunately that's the best he's gonna do. He'll, he won't make the feature, but he might sell a t-shirt or two. So the field going to get doubled up. Alex Swift, two wins already this season here at the Clyde, but not in this 48X machine. The Allen Racing entry starting on the inside of row number one. Dave Lave going to roll off to his outside. Corey Schmuck Jr. in the 2020 has had an eventful night so far. We'll see if he's going to be able to transfer. Six will qualify. Ten cars are on the racetrack. RJ Rossi in the 647. That car does have a couple of wins already this season, actually with Brent Shearer behind the wheel. Heath Hanley in the 82. Starts on the inside of the final row. Big wiggle out of the 21. Trouble, Heath Hanley spins off a turn four. Caution flag is out. Will be a complete restart. Hanley will tag in at the back of the field. He was already starting on the last row. He'll just flip the lane with RJ Rossi. Looked like the 21D of Dave Williams did not get up to speed real well out of his sixth starting position. That's what bottled the field up and ultimately led to Hanley going around in the corner. Field starts to build speed down the back straightaway. Green flag in the air. Swift able to get a good jump off the corner. He's going to be a race leader heading into turn number one. Lay ball over his back bumper. Here's Corey Schmuck to the outside of Hellinger. Wow. <laughs> we said he didn't get up to speed the last time. He sure did this time. Big drive off a of four for Dave Williams. He's going to look inside of Hellinger for fourth. 
Keep your eye on the transfer spot. That's going to be the 56-H of Zach Hollinger. He's already catching up on the back bumper of Charles Hellinger. Hollinger looked inside, thought better of it off the corner. Going to look inside again. Jen Avery runs in the seventh position. She's got Heath Hanley all over her back bumper. Trouble for the 647 of R.J. Rossi. That car pulls off into the infield. Will be a DNF. Three-way battle at the front of the field for this one. Alex Swift holds on to the race lead, but it's less than half a second. First to third. Call it a car length. Oh, Swift goes around, spins in turn two. What a tough break for Alex Swift. That car was hooked up. So it'll be a single file restart. We're halfway home. Alex Swift goes from the penthouse to the cellar. Running first, he'll restart in the ninth position. Green flag back in the air. We are underway. Couple of hard charges coming from the back of the pack now. Heath Hanley, he's got a shot to get into the feature tonight. Oh, looks to the outside of Avery. Avery shoves him up against the outside wall. Alex Swift not able to gain any ground either. Six laps in the books. Dave Labe leads. Corey Schmuck Jr. runs second. Side-by-side -side battle for third. Dave Williams, Zach Holling are going to continue that battle. Hanley gets around the outside of Avery. He's up to the sixth position. Now he's going to go to work on Charles Hellinger. Hanley looks to the inside, grabs the binders just a little bit, accelerates off the corner. At that time by Heath Hanley in the final transfer spot. Alex Swift, big drive off the corner. White flag is out, one lap to go. Dave Labe holds on to the race lead. Swift having a difficult time getting by Charles Hellinger. That may be all she wrote for his chance to get into the feature tonight. Checkered flag is out. Dave Lay picks up the win over Corey Schmuck, Jr. Dave Williams, second. Zach Collinger, fourth. Heath Hanley, fifth. Alex Swift jumps up to the sixth position. Seven, Charles Hellinger, Jen Avery, Josh Olinger, RJ Rossi, and Cody Hipschman all do not qualify. One more consolation race before the intermission period tonight. We'll have the Mike Knappenberger candy and photo scramble in the infield. Also a very special tribute to Gail Miller at the intermission period as well. So you don't want to miss any of the activity here on the front straightaway. Going to have to get the 647 of R.J. Rossi on the hook and towed off the racetrack before we push off the sportsman. Twelve cars are scheduled to start the sportsman concy tonight. Many of these cars either had issues in the heat races and several cars had issues during the feature earlier tonight. The five of Brett Cronrath and the 21D of Dave Williams are scheduled to start on the front row. The 11M of Jessica Moore and the 15 of Robert Shanneman in row number two. 32 with Jack Redkay and the 13B of Matt Yo scheduled for row three. Row four, the 22 of Clinton Hauser and the 22S of Brett Scully. 83 of Evan Lawrence and the 14M of Chelsea Moore is scheduled for row five. The 
the 647 of R.J. Rossi and the 22J of Raymond Olinger scheduled for row number six. I want to remind everybody the sandwich special of the night at the Not Your Mama's Kitchen concession stand, the pulled pork. The line is not long right now. This is when you want to get up there in line, beat the rush at intermission. stand is open as well stop on down say hi to Kim and Jamie also the Lanco Kids Club table is set up if you are a Kids Club member and you haven't checked in for the night make sure you get signed in we're going to be calling the names at intermission of the kids who will get a chance to take a picture with the feature race winners tonight in victory lane for the 21 D of Dave Williams. That car comes to a stop in turn number two. So he will have to head to the back of the pack. like trouble getting the 21 D potentially either out of gear or pushed off here we'll see that car is able to refire but he'll have to tag in at the back of the field Dave Williams scheduled to start second he's gonna have to do some work here to get locked into the a Out. We are underway. Big move by the 22 of Clinton Hauser. He's going to jump up to the fourth spot on the start. The 83 slow down the back straightaway. That's Evan Lawrence. With only seven cars, one drops out. We're going to checker it. Excuse me, eight cars running. That 13B off the pace as well. Also, the 32 of Jack Redkay slowing just a little bit. 
Evan Lawrence pulls off to the infield. That will end his night. At the front, Brett Cronrath going to be your race leader by 1.7 seconds over Jessica Moore. Robert Shadam and Clinton Hauser going to battle side by side in turns three and four. <laughs> nice job repairing the wing by the 22 crew. The shape is not perfect, but it's good enough. He's up to second and in position to transfer to the A. Cross flags, we're already halfway home. Here in the final consolation race of the night, four big 25 lap features coming up after intermission. Field spaced out single file. Not a lot of battling going on. The closest is going to be Clinton Hauser and Robert Shanneman in the battle for second. Hauser slides just a little bit high off of turn number four. Shanneman gains just some a little bit of ground. Trouble for the 13B of Matt Yo. That car pulls off into the infield. That is the second car to DNF. Checkered flag's going to fly on this one early. Six cars will finish. Brett Cronrath, Clinton Hauser, Robert Shanneman, Jessica Moore, Dave Williams, and Jack Redkay will transfer to tonight's main event. Matt Yo, Evan Lawrence, Brett Scully, Chelsea Moore, RJ Rossi, and Raymond Olinger all will DNQ. For those of you that are watching the National Racing Network live stream, that's going to conclude our coverage of the preliminary events. We'll be back after the intermission with feature time racing action. At 600cc performance, our roots run deep in CC racing. A leader in fuel injection, dyno tuning, wiring, and diagnostics. With over 15 years of experience in building and tuning, you can count on us to get you to the winner's circle. Whether it is diagnostic, sales, or service, 600cc performance is your source for everything CC racing. Find out more at 600ccperformance.com. If there's one thing every car guy hates, it's cleaning the garage. Do you want to take most of the time and hassle out of that job? Then call Zone Garage of Eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Agnes and her crew will have your garage, shop, basement, or even your porch looking great all the time. With unique patterns and designs, plus the ability to incorporate your logo or any artwork, your space will never have looked better. Installation is done in one day, guaranteed, and Zone Garage offers a 20-year warranty on the top coat. Their coatings are durable, anti-slipped, and impact resistant. Give them a call at 570-856-6067. That's 570-856-6067 for Zone Garage of Eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Put the keys down, Kevin. But 
I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I've taken 25 selfies in the last 10 minutes. 26. Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home.